these mountains have been the subject of speculation for scholars and, of course, treasure hunters for centuries. However, since many of these ritual sites are located at altitudes of up to 6,000 meters, they still contain some of the world's most enigmatic historical relics. But the origin, geographic location, and purpose of these constructions have never been satisfactorily explained. American anthropologist Johann Reinhardt has done much of his archaeological work at high altitudes. High altitude archaeology is not exactly a field well known to most people. It's a fairly new field, primarily because uh, it was not generally known that there were archaeological sites that existed on mountain summits up to 22,000 feet, that's 6,700 meters. These heights are very difficult for Europeans or North Americans to visualize. Accompanied by Swiss climber Louis Glauser, Reinhardt sets out on another ascent to investigate Inca ruins on Mount Iacata. A skilled mountaineer, he is researching high altitude sites and lakes in the Andes to try and discover what role mountains played in religious beliefs before the Spanish conquest. I first began to get involved with this interest in high altitude archaeology and with some of the ceremonial centers back in 1980. I had read about these ruins on mountaintops in Chile and I just happened to be going through one of the uh, areas in which some of the high mountain ruins were noted as being located and thought I would go and climb one of the peaks to see what they looked like. When I came up here before, uh, about three years ago, I found that there were some ruins up here and we've since now been doing a study and seen that at least the ruins that are on the surface are ruins that are uh, date to the Inca periods. Reinhardt's findings indicate that the gods or deities of ancient religions were believed to control the weather and consequently the fertility of both crops and animals. And hold it uh, more or less straight out from you. A lot of the ruins that we find on mountaintops don't look all that impressive. What is important is why they were made and what they tell us about pre-Hispanic beliefs. But it's not just the sites at high altitudes that make them important, but really is beginning to attract my attention. And it's one of the aspects of the Rolex project that I'm going to be working on more intensely than I've been able to before, is that relating to the ways in which understanding why people were worshiping these mountains, how the beliefs that they had help us to understand low-lying ceremonial centers. These include some of the greatest mysteries of South American archaeology. The best example of a low-lying site, the Nazca Lines, is amongst the most renowned and mysterious archaeological phenomena in South America. Yet their origin and the reason for their existence has long puzzled scholars. What I've just been walking along is one of the small sections of a fairly narrow line in the desert near Nazca. This is just one of many thousands possibly of lines that have been drawn out in the desert here and were made perhaps 2,000 years ago. They continue to be made up to almost the time of the Spanish conquest. The lines are an important component in the theory that Reinhardt has conceived about high altitude ritual sites. He believes these lines were closely connected with mountain worship. From the observation platform built near Nazca can be seen strange figures which are particularly relevant. One of them looks like a pair of hands in which you have uh, fingers, which are number three and then again at four. This is very unusual. This has been very difficult to identify, and one of the solutions is that when deformed bodies, uh, deformed creatures or babies or what have you, appear in nature, people believe that these are made by the deities that control the weather. So this would tie in with the idea of the Nazca lines being associated with these weather gods. Even today, people pray to these deities for successful agriculture.
it's kind of ironic uh, to see me going down something instead of up. Uh, you might think this might not be related with my work, but actually what we're in is part of a system of underground filtration canals, and they enable the people here to plant crops virtually year-round by using the water that they tap from the underground water table. This irrigation system, built thousands of years ago, is vital for farming today. They see these canals as being closely connected with one of the most important mountains, certainly the most uh, obvious, outstanding mountain that's in the area of Nazca today, and that's that mountain that we see up here. Reinhardt is convinced that his research will offer new perspectives in our knowledge of pre-Hispanic societies and provide a plausible explanation of why these religious sites were constructed. We're trying to understand these ceremonial centers, and to do that, we have to try and gather information in areas where it has never been gathered before. I hope to be able to provide a reasonable explanation to a site that's so important as Machu Picchu. Up to today, we still don't understand why the site was built where it was, and really what the site meant. And by doing the kind of research that I hope to do in this project, gathering the current day beliefs of how people think about the mountains, lakes, rivers that surround the site of Machu Picchu that will begin to better understand why it was built where it was and what meaning it had for the people. Uh, thanks to the award, it's very nice to have it security. Knowing about the time, I'll be able to plan a good 18 months ahead. Uh, and I'm looking forward to using that time to get to places that up to this date have been really just beyond my means.